Okay, so I'm going to try and do another one of them recordings like I did with Daniel Ricardo. I made some I made a mistake in that one. Maybe two. I um the 2020 season, I got the drivers mixed up. I thought it was Sergio Perez that was paired with Max Verstappen at Red Bull, but it wasn't. Someone's told me in the um I, I did know that, but I was trying to fly through. Do you know what I mean? So you can't talk about stats and get things wrong. That's why I don't normally talk about stats, because they they kind of bore me, even though they are interesting and they do show you things. I like to look through them, done. I don't like to then go and talk about them because I just forget, because I don't care enough, right? But now I want to do the same thing. No, apologize for getting that stuff wrong, because if you're going to talk about stuff, you should get it right. You can't be blurting out wrong information out there. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. Right, so let's hope I get this one right. I'm not that good at this kind of stuff. Normally, I just talk. This time, I'm trying to speak stats. So you got to get them right. I want to talk about George Russell. Let's get to it. George Russell joined Formula One in 2019 with Williams and his teammate was Robert Kubica. The old dog of Robert Kubica. And Kubica beat George Russell. He got one point. George Russell got zero. So... George Russell's first season in Formula 1 got beat by Robert Kubica. Then we go on to 2020 and George Russell is paired with Nicholas Latifi. George Russell beats Nicholas Latifi. He scores two points. He finishes ninth in Bahrain. But he does actually get three points because he got fastest lap. So George Russell beats Nicholas Latifi in Nicholas Latifi's first season because he gets no points. And George Russell gets three points in total because he finished ninth in Bahrain and got fastest lap. I don't know if he got... I think he did get fastest lap in Bahrain. Don't quote me on that. But he did get a fastest lap somewhere, which made him finish the season with three points. Moving on to 2021. George Russell beats Latifi 16 points to seven points. But I'm cutting out the Belgian Grand Prix because that was a farce. What did they do? A couple of laps and they got half points. So they're scrapping that. So Latifi loses a point because he finished ninth and got two points. So he loses one, okay, because he got one point because it was half points. George Russell finished second. Finished second and got nine points because it was half points. So we're scrapping that. We're scrapping them points. So Latifi goes from seven points to six points and George Russell goes from 16 points to seven points, which means... George Russell beat Latifi by one point. Because I am scrapping Belgium. Not to make this happen, but th that Grand Prix, Grand Prix shouldn't, it should be wiped from existence. It was ridiculous, that was. It was ridiculous. So that's why I think a lot of people will be, will, will agree with that. A lot of people will agree that that Grand Prix was a joke. So, Latifi gets seven points. Russell, no, Latifi gets six points. Russell gets seven points. So, Russell beat Latifi by one point in 2021. Russell beat Latifi by three points in 2020 and Russell gets beat by Robert Kubica in, in 2019. So hold on a minute. George Russell made Latifi look not bad because he only finished ninth and got three points in one race. Otherwise, he would have had no points just like Nicholas Latifi. And in 2021, Russell only beat Latifi by one point. I know there was in a... Um, a Williams, struggling in a Williams, but Latifi's got the same, um, he's got the same excuse. I'm in a Williams too. And George Russell only beat me by three points in 2020, my first season. And then, this, is, this, this could be Latifi's argument. George Russell only beat me by three points in my first season, and he only got them points in one race. So really, we're on par. And then Latifi can say, George Russell only beat me by one point in my second season in 2021. So if I was if I was Nicholas Latifi, I'd be saying, look at George Russell now. Because when he was my teammate, he beat me by three points and he beat me by one point. And now he's racing against the world champion. So George Russell made Latifi look good. The sport is making George Russell look good. Because look at the un look at the unlucky situations Lewis Hamilton has been in, and George Russell was benefited from it. 
Look at the luck that George Russell has had to get the points that he's got. It's been a lot of good luck and bad luck that have worked in the favour of George Russell. But when you pair him up to Nicholas Latifi, the, a driver that everybody calls, and rightly so, <laughs> and rightly so, maybe don't get too harsh sometimes with it, but do you know what I mean? If you're in the public eye and you're racing right at the top, the pinnacle of the so, the so-called pinnacle of motorsport, then you've got to take some judgment. You have to. You can't take praise if you're not going to take criticism. Now, if you want to do well in your sport, you expect praise. So if you're not going to do very well, expect the criticism. But I want to let me end this one here by saying Nicholas Latifi and George Russell, they were kind of evenly matched, even though. George Russell did beat Nicholas Latifi in nearly every single race. He did, he did beat him. He is better than everyone's better than Nicholas Latifi. It's not something to to rave about if you beat Nicholas Latifi. It's not. But that's the point. George Russell only just beat Nicholas Latifi, even though, even though he can only do what the car allows you to do. So there is a benefit of the doubt there with George Russell. I'm not saying he's rubbish. I'm just saying he ain't as good as everyone's saying he is. Because the points that he's got, there's been a lot of luck involved and a lot of unfair things involved in this. Which puts George Russell up in a place where really he shouldn't be, in my opinion. And looking at these stats, he got beat by Robert Kubica. He beat Nicholas Latifi in Latifi's first season, but he only beat him by three points. And then he beat him in 2021, but he only beat him by one point if you take away the Belgian Grand Prix. So on paper, they look quite similar. It doesn't look like George Russell is that much better than Nicholas Latifi, even though it probably is. But on paper, it doesn't look that way. And then on paper, it looks like George Russell is doing so good against the all-time world champion. But really, when you look at it, there's a lot of things that have made this happen. So I'm not believing this George Russell business. I thought it was decent. I thought, you know what? Let's see what he does in a Mercedes. But the way things are going, and when you break it down, is only where he is, not through his skill of driving. Um, I'm going to leave that on there. Just want to run through. I might, I might do this with some other drivers too, because I'm sick and tired of just moaning about Formula One. Let's talk about some driving in Formula One. When was the last time you watched a Formula One YouTuber speaking about racing? It's always drama, isn't it? It's always this and always that. It's always the team. It's always all the little things that are happening in and out of the sport. Never what is happening on track in a positive way. So, I don't know. I'm just trying to look at it in a different way. Trying to break it down a little bit different. Trying to just, just stay off the negativity all the time. This might sound negative, but it's not. I'm not trying to diss George Russell here. I'm just trying to speak what I see. He came in Formula 1 in 2019 and now it's 2022. And there's a massive contrast between when he came into the sport and now. And it, what we're seeing now isn't entirely fair and it isn't a true reading. It's not. Just like when we look back in history, in 2021, George Russell got 16 points to Latifi seven, but that's not a true reading because Belgium shouldn't have existed. So that means George Russell only beaten by one point. And we could do the same thing in 2022. But I'm not going to break all that down now because I'm not Mr. Statman. I'm not. I just like to look at things sometimes and that's what I'm doing right here. I thought I'd share it with you. Okay, that's that. Whatever you're doing today, I hope you have a good one. I hope you're happy and smiling. And if you're not happy and smiling and you don't have a good day, there's always tomorrow to think about. So don't worry about it. All right? I'm out of here.